Enjoy that torch. From feeling undervalued on set to being offered a paycheck that's way below her worth as an actress in the movie industry, here's the real reason Neve Campbell turned down Scream 6. And it all has to do with the gender pay gap. Now, the average knee-jerk reaction to everything I've said right now would be something like, wait, hang on, undervalued, smaller paycheck, gender pay gap, what? Neve played one of the most iconic female characters in the horror genre for two and a half decades. Sydney Prescott is right up there with Halloween's Laurie Strode and Nightmare on Elm Street's Nancy Thompson. The Scream franchise has made about three quarters of a billion dollars from all five movies. And a huge part of its massive success is Neve's rock-solid performance. So what am I on about here? Well, let me rewind the clock back to June of last year. Paramount had just announced Scream 6, and everyone was hyped for the return of Ghostface. Six movies and the dudes still walking around town and terrorizing helpless teens. It might get boring for some, but not for me. I love switching my brain off in a Scream movie. I was really happy about it until Neve Campbell announced that she wouldn't be returning to the franchise. So many blood trails. This one yours? My first thought was, well, it's over. She's never gonna come back, and one of my favorite female horror characters is now gone. Well, not quite, but I'll get back to that. In her brief statement back in June, she explained that as a woman in Hollywood who's been working in the industry since 1989, she felt that the offer Paramount put in front of her wasn't equal to the value she brought to the franchise. She's had to work really hard in order to make a mark, especially in the late 80s and early 90s, where Hollywood was basically throwing stuff at the wall to see what stuck. Movies like I Know What You Did Last Summer, Child's Play, Freddy Krueger sequels, Evil Dead sequels, I could go on forever. But the point is, a lot of the slasher films failed to take off because they didn't have the same appeal as Scream. And part of that appeal was Sidney Prescott, who started out as Ghostface's would-be victim and eventually turned into a survivor and total badass who refused to be labeled as a victim ever again. She's someone a lot of us could relate to, and I feel she's a symbol of strength for women in many ways. And I think no one could have played her better than Neve Campbell. The same way I think Ellen Ripley couldn't have been played by anyone except Sigourney Weaver. So when you've got a legacy that spans two and a half decades, you deserve to be paid your worth if you're gonna continue showing up in a franchise. It was a difficult decision for Neve to make, but she had to make it in order to uphold her values. We've seen plenty of actresses speak on the gender pay issue in the past. Back in 2017, Jessica Chastain made headlines after she turned down a huge role because of a messed up system. She revealed that the studios would come to her with an offer, but didn't want her to sign on first. They'd wait for the male co-star to sign on, then see if there's anything they can leverage from her salary and add it to the male co-stars. If it sounds manipulative and dark, that's because it is, and that's what Jessica couldn't stand for anymore. And if you want to go back even further, let's talk about The X-Files, where it took three seasons before Gillian Anderson made the same per episode as David Duchovny. So yeah, it's always been a problem in the industry, and it looks like it isn't going away anytime soon. That's why it's important for well-known, established actresses like Neve and Jessica to talk about this issue and highlight it to the public. Public. Besides, if you knew what Bruce Willis made for the fourth Die Hard movie, you'd scream into a pillow like I did. I'm a massive fan of the Die Hard series, even if it fell off the rails after the third movie. While I was doing some research for this video, I found that Willis made $25 million for Live Free or Die Hard, a movie that barely made its production budget. And Scream 5, a fifth sequel, it made $140 million on a $24 million budget. That's a massive profit, and she got a cool 10 mil for her work. 
Now, you could argue that she's had fewer and fewer scenes in the movies as the franchise has progressed. And you'd be right, she did have less screen time in Scream 5 than she did in Scream 4. But Robert Downey Jr. made $10 million for literally eight minutes of screen time in Spider-Man Homecoming. So yeah, it doesn't add up, does it? Now, I'm not comparing the two actors in terms of popularity or demand. I'm just saying that an actor deserves to be paid their worth no matter who they are. Okay. And Neve has never implied that she wants 10 million for eight minutes in a Scream sequel. She's just saying that she wasn't offered a fair deal, period. And if she wasn't paid as much as her co-stars and didn't get a fair deal for the amount of work she put into her role as Sydney Prescott, then she'd feel really undervalued if she signed on and arrived on set. The same way she's done for nearly three decades by the time Scream 6 hits theaters. Imagine you'd been doing a job for 30 years and still weren't being paid your work. Doesn't matter what it is. Could be construction, content creation, crypto, corporate job. If you weren't making as much as your peers and putting in just as much work, you'd be pissed off too, right? Well, that's how Neve feels. And her co-stars agree with her. When she told the directors and cast that she wouldn't be coming back, Courtney Cox was pretty broken up about it, but she was also really supportive of her decision. Melissa Barrera, who will be coming back as Sam Carpenter, said that she completely understood Neve's decision to not return. Melissa isn't a stranger to pay gaps and being treated unfairly in the industry. As a woman of color, she knows exactly what it's like to be undervalued, especially when compared to a white actress. So if Neve, a white actress, was feeling undervalued and underpaid for a role she's played for decades, then you can imagine how much of a problem it still is in Hollywood. So personally, I'm really glad that Neve stood up for what she believes in, even if it cost her a role in a franchise she's loved for half of her adult life. But is she completely gone from the franchise? Will Sydney be written off and won't be making any more appearances in the future? Well, no. As of this video, she hasn't ruled out future Scream sequels. It all depends on the number written on her check. It's that simple. She recently told People Magazine that if Paramount came to her with a number that felt right to her as an actress who's worked her butt off, then she'd be down to return as Sydney in future sequels. Is Paramount actually going to do something like that is up for debate. I hope they do, because Scream movies always make a ton of money, and Neve honestly deserves it after sticking with the franchise for so long. But what do you think? Will Paramount shell out the cash, or will we get an oh no, Sydney died off screen? dialogue in the upcoming movie. And that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm introducing a new rule. What would that be? Huh? What about my ending?